Hello, it's Darren at Moonhead Studio again doing a follow-up to the expression map video that I posted last time. I'm going to be looking at expression maps and how they can reduce your RAM usage on your machine. But first off, I'm going to delve into contact and how we can really reduce the amount of memory that takes up and also best service engine. So a few people out there querying how you do the same things on engine that you can do in contact and I'll go through the settings of that so that you're fully up to date on what you need to do to make the most of your machine. So let's dive straight in. Right so I've got uh, the same piece of music we used in the um, previous video up and uh, you know it's got a it's got a number of instruments in there but there's quite a lot of audio there as well so not everything is uh, is using RAM and if we have a, a look at my resources at the moment um, Cubase is taking up about 6.1 gig and I've got a 16 gig machine so that's uh, obviously going to eat up pretty quickly if you've got a lot of VST instruments. So let's um, have a look at the, the violin we were playing with in the previous one um, and bring up the instrument. And you can see here that it's using 0.64 gigabytes. So that's quite a chunk of my memory. And you can turn off articulations with Spitfire. So you know we could remove a few of these and uh, that we're not using and then we're down to you know sort of around about half a gig but it's still a lot but you've got this wonderful function here in the purge um, drop down where you can update the sample pool and what that will do is just take out any samples in RAM that you're not using so it will only hold the samples of the notes that you're actually using which to be quite honest is usually pretty small so if we click that we're down to 22 megabytes from, well, originally 0.64, but it's only half a gig um, to 22 megabytes. So that can have a huge saving on, on your RAM. So always have a look. Once you've finalized pretty much what you're doing, um, click on that, see what saving you can make. It doesn't stop you playing in more stuff. It'll just start to load up those samples as you go along. So that's contact. Right, so now we're going to take a look at Best Service Engine 2. And people have been asking online how you purge samples from this player uh, because it is one of the more popular ones along with Contact. Um, but there doesn't seem to be much out there telling you how to do it. There's probably a good reason for that because actually what it's doing is it's doing it for you as it goes along. It's got a very clever algorithm in here. Um, you can see up here the used RAM. So this is the RAM that this Armenian Duduk instrument is occupying and I have to say one of my favorites, all-time favorites ever since the days of Desert Winds. Love that instrument. Um, the used RAM is about 66 megabytes and it's controlled by these parameters here. So this is the default setting um, and I'll go through what these mean. Preload time is not the time it takes for the samples to load. It's actually the milliseconds of sample that is loaded in memory. So for each note of the Duduk, there will be 200 milliseconds preloaded and the rest will be dragged off your hard drive as you play the note. The unload time is basically purge. This is what is purging the samples from engine and it's doing it on the fly automatically all the time. So as soon as you stop playing a note, it's purging it from memory and the default is immediately. So it just literally leaves as soon as, as, soon as you play a note. The block size um, depends on your hard drive. If you've got an SSD drive, it reads smaller blocks, but it has to read them more often. If you've got a slow hard drive, it'll read bigger blocks, but it won't have to move around across the hard drive as many times to do so. Uh, this is the, the one that I'm not utterly sure what's what it's doing, but um, I think that's I, that's my understanding anyway. Right, so remember this 66 megabytes what I'm going to do is set it to a fast hard drive but with little RAM 
So I only want the, the minimum amount of the sample being loaded into RAM, which is 100 milliseconds. The unload time, I want it to unload straight away after it's used them, but I've got an ultra fast, fast um, SSD drive, so I'm happy with that. Save preferences, and you will have to close engine for that to take effect. So we'll do that, and then we'll open it up again, reload the Duduk, and then we'll have a look at the preferences and now we can see it's only taking up 32 megabytes of RAM. Now, as I say, if you're playing notes, oh, yes, you can't hear that, but I can. That was very loud in my headphones. Um, it'll start to use RAM as you play, but it's immediately purging it. Now let's go the other way. Let's say you've got a very slow hard drive, say a 5400 RPM drive that's running Cubase plus you're getting all your samples off it you'll want to load as much of the samples into RAM as possible so assuming you've got the RAM I think the maximum is three seconds that's 3000 milliseconds and the unload time you really want them to stay in memory as long as possible and I think the maximum is 20 seconds so that's 20,000 milliseconds so that's the other extreme we'll save that then we'll close engine down and we will open it up again and have a little look at uh, what happens there so same instrument and now it's using 420 megabytes of RAM so getting towards that sort of half a gig of RAM for this exactly the same instrument so this is how you can control what's going on under the hood with best service if you've got a very slow drive you may want more in ram and of course i've shown you the extremes you can go anywhere in between those if you've got a very fast hard drive then just load the bare minimum of the samples into your ram because you'll save your ram and you can just draw it all off the uh, the ssd drive or whatever you're using so that's best service and i uh, hope that helped Let's have a look at just one other tip before we go. Right, now to uh, continue with the expression map theme that we started in the previous video, I just want to show you a few ways that you can save on memory or even just the, the size of your screen map of, of all your instruments. So the usual way to put a template with different articulations in will be to put one uh, contact instance or whatever sample you're using for each articulation and when you look at the instrument you will um, just find that there's one instrument in there this one happens to um, be a legato one so it, it automatically switches uh, as, as the legato plays but it is one instrument and you might have you know well on a, a big template several hundred different articulations um, that you'll refer to and if I play this um, in context and I'll and then I'll um, solo out the violin you'll hear what's happening here between these two tracks because it's basically bouncing between legato to a trill to legato to a trill across the two tracks so this would be the standard way to do it <laughs> So you can see that works um, quite smoothly. So that's that's a good way to, to do it on a standard machine. If you're low on RAM, um, then you might want to cut down on the number of contact instances you've got uh, because they can pile up after you know you've got uh, 20 30 40 different instances so you can actually have two separate tracks in exactly the same way that we did with with this one here but have them just sharing the same contact instance so if I bring up the instrument here you can see we've got both instruments in the same instance of contact one is on MIDI channel 2 one is on MIDI channel 1 and these refer to different MIDI channels and literally it's exactly the same result but with half the memory taken up of you know for your contact instances so if we listen to that really no different but 
With expression maps you can go even one step further than that and you can have one track and one contact instance. So similar to this except that everything now is recorded in one line and all you're doing is using an expression map to switch between the two. So if we unmute that um, and, and play that in context you will see that it's just no, no difference. <laughs> And what's going on here is that we've got a very simple expression map, but it could be much more complicated. It's set up with the legatos with a channel one call and trills with the channel MIDI channel two call. And um, to learn how to do this, just have a look at my previous video. We've put the note on information right down at C minus two, which is well out of the range of the instrument. That's quite important, otherwise it will it will play the note rather than just um, calling a, a channel command. And just to be on the safe side, we've also changed the minimum pitch to one note above that. So even if your instrument could play C2, it wouldn't because um, we're telling it not to. So that's a very straightforward one. When you look in the editor, you'll see, and for those of you that didn't watch the previous um, video, articulations is available on this drop down here and it's always at the top we've got a legatos for most of the notes and then we just have these trills and then legato trill legato trill all on the same track this is an attribute and this is a direction i explained all of that in the last video but the one good thing about attributes is they actually apply to a single note so in this case this is good because it actually clings to the note. If I move the note around, it still has the trill there. With direction, it's great for great big blocks. But if, say, I start to think, oh, I need to bring this note further forward, suddenly it's outside of the legato area. The legato direction does not travel with the notes. It's not applied to notes. It's actually applied to that particular time in the piece of music. So there are differences between the two. Right, so that's how you could use an expression map to not only cut down the number of contact instances, which you can do conventionally anyway, but also to cut down your track list and therefore the amount of scrolling up and down that you'll have to do when you're trying to move through your project. So I hope that's been useful, uh, along with those tips on contact and engine. If you were really interested in this video and you want to hear more, then obviously subscribe. I don't ask it of everybody, um, but it's up to you. And uh, please look out for the next one. Thanks a lot.